Time now for Message to the Black Man with Brother Shabazz. Welcome right, again, brothers and sisters, this morning. It's a message to the Black Man Radio Talk Show. I'm your host this morning, Brother Shabazz, along with my co host this morning, Minister Shakur. Yes, sir, brothers and sisters, we listen to some the show. Yes, sir, back in the day. Good song, very good song. Like that bother my head on that myself. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to get right on with our program this morning. All praises are due to Master Farad Muhammad that Jehovah came here July 4th, 1930. We thank him for raising up Moses in the person of the most honorable Elijah. Muhammad, peace be upon him forevermore. And we thank O Moses for giving the name Muhammad to one like unto himself, the prophet like Moses in the person of the Honorable Silas Muhammad. And we thank the Honorable Silas Muhammad. Courage on the fire. Yes, sir, brothers and sisters. Going back to Chicago, setting things right. Had to deal with Wallace Dean Muhammad. Put the lost foundation of Islam back on the right track once again. Reestablishing the holy name of Master Farad Muhammad and his first and last messenger, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I give great honor to the 24 black Islamic scientists this morning who controlled this earth until the coming of that Jehovah, that son of man, Master Farad Muhammad. And brothers and sisters, get ready for Savior's Day. That's right, Savior's Day 2024. Join with us on February the 25th, 2024 in Atlanta, GA, at Muhammad's Mods of Islam, 3040 Camerton Road, Southwest Atlanta, Georgia. Doors open at 1 p.m. Keynote speaker will be the prophet like Moses himself, the Honorable Silas Muhammad. So brothers and sisters, prepare now for Savior's Day 2024 on February 25th in Atlanta, GA, Muhammad's Mosque of Islam, 3040 Camerton Road, Southwest Atlanta, Georgia. Doors open at 1 p.m. Keynote speaker will be the Honorable Silas Muhammad. And brothers and sisters, we know this is Ramadan for us in the month of December, and we will be going over some information on that concerning why Moses, in the person of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad now, prescribed for us the month of December to do our fast in, and why he chose it as the 12th month of the calendar for us to practice Ramadan in. There has been a lot of conversation now, many of the I would say so-called leaders of the messenger's teachings has taken the messenger followers away from practicing now Ramadan in the month of December. You don't hear them speaking about doing the practice of Ramadan in December anymore. They have gone on with the Christian way of life, also with Orthodox Islam practice of Ramadan. Now, if you say you're a follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and you don't practice Ramadan as he prescribed it for us in the month of December, you're not a follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad because this month is a holy month for us. And many of our brothers and sisters don't know that. And that's why we had to enlighten you concerning who the Honorable Elijah Muhammad really was. And we're going to get into a lot of the information a little bit later on. But this morning, this is Ramadan for us, the true followers now, the true followers of Moses, the true followers of the prophet like Moses on the scene today. So brothers and sisters, we're going to get more into that information. Brother Minister, we're going to be talking more about that in his talk with you all in a few minutes. But we're in the spiritual war now of Armageddon. We are talking about knowledge and facts. As you go in the court of law, they always say you got to present evidence. Is that right, Brother Mills? That's right. You got to present what well, evidence. That's what the judge won't show me the evidence. You can have a lot of knowledge, but you got to have facts to go along with that knowledge to back you up. So when you go into a court of law with a myth or a belief that you think you know something and you don't know, you're going to get run out of the courthouse because the judge is going to dismiss your case because you don't have any facts. You don't have any evidence to back you up. 
So we're going to get into now, the minister going to get into Ramadan. Why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, that Moses now, prescribed that month for us and what's taking place inside of Christmas. You call Mary Christmas, the birth of Jesus, which will be December 25th. And our brothers and sisters really need to know what it is that they are practicing. And I will say this. Now, we have forgot all about Jesus now. Now, we're talking about a fat white boy coming down your chimney. Now, I'm just going to say it like it is. A 400-pound, filthy white boy coming down your chimney now. And you, and you singing, I saw mama kissing Santa Claus. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's back it up. No, you saw your mama getting ready to do something else with that cracker. That's what the deal is now. So, I'm going to tell you like it is. You, 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 you brothers and sisters out there. I, 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 yeah, I saw mama, she, you know, she was kissing Santa Claus, man. I ain't tell you no lie. Yeah, she kissing Santa Claus, all right. Santa Claus going to do something with your mama that, you know, you, she don't want you to know about. And that's the bottom line. This is what's going on with this. Like I said, I'm going to leave this to Brother Minister. I'm going to let Brother Minister get into this. We're not trying to hurt nobody's feelings. We're trying to wake you up about what you're practicing. And you put, or the Caucasian race, Put Jesus' name, which you identify, black man, woman. I'm talking about my brothers and sisters in Christianity. You now, as the Ambalaj woman said, you are that baby Jesus. That's what he told you now. That's what he wrote. Go into any of his books. And I will say to my Muslim, black Muslim brothers over there, you know, put down that study guide and get back into the Ambalaj Muhammad books. Put that study guide down. That's right. And get back into the Honorable Elijah Muhammad books so you won't be so confused out here about why Silas Muhammad is Silas Muhammad. That's right. That's just the bottom line there. I'm just telling you like it is. And this goes for many of you out there. Confused. We're going to straighten this up going into January of 2024. Now look for it now. Because there has been a major error that has been made misrepresenting the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and who he is or who he was in the books of prophecy. That's right. Oh, we're going to straighten that out for you. But we're going to bring on Brother Minister here because I want Brother Minister to have enough time to go over his talk with you all this morning and listen to him very carefully. Like I said, this is Ramadan for us. This is not Orthodox Ramadan. This is not Orthodox Islam. We're not going to play with your feelings. We're going to tell you the truth so you'll know. Ain't no filthy white man coming down no chimney. I tell you what, then tell them to go over there to Palestine and give the bombed out children in Palestine some damn toys. Mm. With their brothers and sisters over there, now, don't bomb Palestine to death. Oh, is Santa Claus going to Palestine? Won't you tell Rudolph to take a detour now, all right? Say, Rudolph, we're going to do a detour and we're going to Palestine and we're going to drop these toys off in Palestine. So the Palestinians better be careful because there might be bombs coming, brother. Then Rudolph might be dropping bombs on you over there now. That's right. I'm just telling it like it is. So any further ado now, I'm going to bring on Brother Melson because we're we going to set the record straight. We ain't going to play with your feelings here. we let you know exactly what's going on with this pagan holiday that the white man called Christmas that our brothers and sisters are hung up in, saying they are celebrating and worshiping Jesus' birthday which they are not, and the Pope of Rome, all of them know that. So any further ado, here is Minister Shakur for the Lost Foundation of Islam in the, in the city of Baltimore for the Honorable Silas Muhammad. As-salamu alaykum. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Shabazz. <laughs> in the name of Master Farah Muhammad, Almighty God, Allah, to whom all praises are forever due, and in memory of our beloved messenger, Elijah Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon his name forever. And we thank our spiritual brother, the Honorable Silas Muhammad, for bringing back to life our nation. And in recognition of our Queen, Her Majesty, Mishaki Muhammad, assalamu alaikum. Four topics I want to touch on today. This heathen holiday, Christmas, a new government, black politicians condemn Hamas, and Jews are imposters. Now, first I want to start off with a quote. Ignorance is no excuse after knowledge of truth has been given to you. 
With that being said, I will begin reading from the How to Eat to Live, Book 2, pages 48, 49, and 50. We hear Elijah Muhammad and his followers. I prescribe for you the month of December to fast if you are able to take the fast instead of the regular month that travels through the year called Ramadan by the Muslims. Why did I prescribe for you the month of December? It is because it was in this month that you used to worship a dead prophet by the name of Jesus. And it was in that month that you wasted your money and wealth to worship the 25th day of this month, December, as the Christians do. The Christians know that it is not the birthday of Jesus, for they do not know the birthday of Jesus. No one knows it. Because being persecuted by the Jews, Joseph and Mary feared the death of not only their newborn baby that they were to bring into birth, but even feared for their own lives for committing the act out of wedlock. But they were not to be killed, for they were a sign of the black man in America, according to the Holy Quran. See Holy Quran chapter 4, verse 171. What act out of wedlock? Adultery and fornication. Joseph and Mary, upon me, Joseph was married to another woman and had six children. See Mark 6, 3. Talks about Jesus' half-brothers and sisters. John 8, 41 confirms the Jews knew Joseph and Mary committed fornication. While Christians have deceived you in worshiping the birth of Nimrod, who was born the 25th of December in that month, no man knows the day Jesus was born but Joseph and Mary themselves. This is a sign right there. No man of the evil world was to know when the birth of the spiritual birth of Muhammad was to take place. And most surely they do not. I set up this for you and me to try to divert or drive us out of the old white slave master's worship of a false birthday, December 25th of Jesus. Allah God who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad to whom praise I do forever taught me that Jesus was not even born in the entire month of December. The scholars agree that according to their history, Jesus could not have been born in December. Allah God taught me that Jesus was born between the first and second week in September in, instead of December. But no one have or no one knew the day Jesus' birth except Joseph and Mary. So, to break my people up from the worship of a false birthday of Jesus, we turn to abstaining from eating in the daylight hours during the month of December. This is in no way a fast. Now, let's talk about this heathen or pagan holiday, Christmas, and its representative, a big, fat white man with a red and white suit on with a white beard, black boots flying through the air, and a slate with reindeer hooked up to it going to every home in the world, leaving toys for little boys and girls. What an incredible lie. For my Christian brothers and sisters who practice custom, the customs of these people, read Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2, 3, and 4. Now, on page 179 and 180 of our Savior has arrived. By the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, page 180, it reads, Oh, yes. They take other than the truth for a lot of fun, while we cannot take other than the truth for fun, when it is not fun. This is a sign, this is a sin before God. There is no lie in him at all. And if we believe and follow him, we must be the same and not liars. But this is due to the nature of the white race who was made like that. They were a false people leading the people wrong, falsely. And the time will come when they will wake up, like the child who wakes up, to the knowledge that the real Santa Claus is his father and mother. Now, on page 179, then for the first time, the children then learns the truth, that he was only deceived by what they had taught him. This teaches the child in an early stage to lie, because the parents bring them up lying. So I ask all the children, who read this article on Santa Claus to tell your parents to give you the present that they want to give to you and not to tell you that some Santa Claus is going to give them to you because they are the ones who buy the present presents. Now back to page 180 for you. So when you wake up to the real God, 
for this white race, time is up. And you will find out that the God is yourself. And your parents are the black man, was the first God who created the heavens and the earth. Now, Muhammad meets the press, February 11, 1972. In, the, in this interview, Message Elijah Muhammad foretold of a future government that will be established to govern the people. This government is here now. Questions, how will your resources be administered? Messenger Muhammad, that will be carried on by the nation after setting up the nation on the right way or right path to take care of themselves. They do not need any more instructions on that. They will follow it as the Constitution of America has been followed. Question, will it be run by local mosques? Messenger Muhammad, no, no, no. After this, the whole entire nation of black people will be governed divinely. And the government will be a divine government and not something that is governed locally like we have today. We will have a divine government set up for us, and it will stand forever. We will not need any change. There are references that support the establishment of a government by Elijah Muhammad. I want you to know these things, professional people. I'm here to lay the foundation of a new world, a new government. And we can't follow the old world and its government, which we have known. We are going to build a new government, and the government is the government of the righteous. October 22, 1972, Theology of Time. We want to have our senators for ourselves. We want to build a Congress of our own, ruled by our own. October 8, 1972, Theology of Time. Now, government is mentioned ten times in that article. New government is mentioned five times on page 113 in the Savior, and our Savior has arrived three times on page 77. Did you hear that, NAACP, Black Caucus, ADOS, all those other organizations that are vying for reparations? Reparations are paid to a government, from a other government, to a nation from another nation, for an offense committed against that nation that is being compensated. Wake up. Wake up and stop fighting against that which you know within your heart is right. Do you know that if the black man will stand up, get some backbone, and say, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, and come on over and accept your nation, the Afro-descendant nation, you will be put in heaven almost at once. Now, don't get distracted with what's going on over there in Israel. I have empathy for the Palestinian people, wanting and fighting to live as human beings. They've been fighting since 1948, and they are a small group, but they are relentless. I applaud them. We've been here since 1555, and we are more than 40 million, and you have become complacent and think that you have arrived because some of you have a few crumbs from the slave master's table, and you are not satisfied, not concerned about your brothers and sisters still down there in the gutter. There are black notables, that politicians that speak out against the Hamas. Al Sharpton, National Action Network, and NAACP condemned the attack on Israel. They stood in solidarity with the Anti-Defamation League. This is what Al Sharpton said. We hold innocent civilians, families, and, other, and our partners in our hearts sharing prayers for their safety. I wonder who Al Sharpton's partners is. Can anyone tell me, did Al Sharpton go to Rankin County, Mississippi, when our brothers Jenkins and Parker were being tortured? by those six officers. And what about the innocent Palestinians that have been suffering since 1948? Minority leader of the House of Representatives, Jeff Hakeem Jeffries, tweeted, my statement on the violent, unprovoked, despicable attack, terrorist attack by Hamas against the state of Israel, he writes, I strongly condemn the violent attacks by the terrorist organization Hamas on the Jewish people and the state of Israel. The Black Caucus tweeted its support for Israel. The post reads, We offer our sincerest condolences to the families of those who have lost loved ones, and we strongly condemn the attacks against the people of Israel and its right to self-defense against the violent attacks. Now, I recommend or I commend Representative Cori Bush. She is the only one that I have respect for, for speaking truth. For she tweeted, The the fight for black lives and the fight for Palestinian liberation are interconnected. We oppose our money going to fund militarized policing, occupation, and system of violent oppression and trauma. What a bold statement to make considering her surroundings. Representative Bush, watch your back around those snakes in Washington. The black notables that are calling these people terrorists and that the attack is unprovoked 
and despicable, neither one of them mentioned the criminally barbaric day-to-day -day tactics by Israel, which led up to the present-day crisis, which has been going on for 75 years. Now, to the black caucus that says Israel has a right to self-defense, read Article 21 of the UN Charter, paragraph 129, I mean 139. Adi Imsis is an international law professor at the Queen's University in Canada. He says, and I quote, on the Article 51 of the UN Charter, Israel does not have the right to self-defense in occupied territory. There is a claim by political leadership, especially in the West, that Israel enjoys a right to, de to self-defense. Under Article 51 of the UN Charter, in relation to the attack that was brought against them October 7th by Palestinian paramilitaries. That is false. I would direct all to paragraph 139, the International Court of Justice's advisory opinion on the legality of the war dated 2004. And in the paragraph, the court makes it very clear that Israel does not have the right of self-defense under Article 51 of the UN Charter in relation to attacks that emanates from within an occupied territory. Israel is in effective control over it and therefore cannot claim a right of self-defense in relation to that, unquote. Now, from the website VeteransDay.com, an article written by Stuart Littlewood titled, Who Started It All? The quote, should we go back to 106 years to 1917 and pin it on Balfour, or 75 years to 1948 when Zionist militias rampaged through Palestine, massacring, pillaging, and driving residents from their home as they pursued plan delay, their ethnic cleansing blueprint for violent and bloody takeover of the Holy Land, or a 2006 Israel backed by U.S. and U.K. began siege of Gaza after Hamas had won the 2006 election fair and square, according to international observers, unquote. Now, since the 7th century, Palestine has been mainly Arabic coming under Ottoman rule in 1516. During the First World War, the country was liberated from the Turkish Ottomans after the Allied powers in correspondence between Sir Henry McMahon and Sharif Hussein Ibn Ali of Mecca in 1915 promised independence to Arab leaders in return for their help in defeating Germany's ally, Turkey. Then came the political movement called Zionism in London. Among the ruling elite and the British government was persuaded by the Zionist chief spokesman, Shane Wiseman, to surrender Palestine for their new Jewish homeland. Therefore, a Zionist convert possessed a breathtaking arrogance, wrote, and I quote, Palestine, we do not propose to even go through the form of consulting the wishes of the present inhabitants of the country. The four powers are committed to Zionism, and Zionism, be it right or wrong, good or bad, is rooted in age-long tradition, in present needs, and future hopes of profounder import than the desires and prejudices of the 700,000 Arabs who occupied that land, unquote. What a bold and arrogant statement to make about a people who had occupied and owned that land for 1,500 years. But... Every Jew didn't agree with the Balfour Declaration. Lord Sittingham warned, and I quote, the harm done by dumping down an alien population upon an Arab country may never be remedied. What we have done by concession, not to the Jewish people, but to a Zionist extreme section, is start a running sore in the East, and no one can tell how far that sore will extend, unquote. Now, the Jews are claiming to be Abraham's descendants by way of Isaac, Abraham's second son. Isaac had twin sons, according to the Bible, Jacob and Esau. The Jews claim to, that they are Abraham's seed from Isaac via Jacob, Esau's twin brother. So, any descendants down from Esau and Jacob would be cousins. Now, if you follow the lineage of Esau in your Bible, it's Eliphaz and then Teman. 
Master Pharaoh Muhammad, Allah God, is an Arab who came from the sons of Esau, Eliphaz, and Teman. See Genesis 36.10. Now the Jews and Arabs are supposed to be cousins from twin brothers, and yet they look nothing alike. Different attitudes, different cultures, different languages, different mannerisms, different religions. I could go on and on. That There's one simple reason for the differences. The Jews are white people and not Abraham's seed because Abraham was not a Jew nor a Christian. He was an upright man, a Muslim. See Holy Quran, chapter 3, verse 66. Master Farah Muhammad told the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that the Jews are not descendants of anybody. They are grafted from the original man, the black man. Now let's look at what the book of Revelation says about him. Revelation 2, 9. I know the blasphemy of those that say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Now verse 10 makes it a little bit more understandable as to who are really the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou hast shalt suffer. The devil shall cast some of you into prison. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Now, does that sound like the Jews being cast into prison, or are you, black man? That fits you, black man. Did not America, the FBI, cast the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and some of his followers into prison in 1942? Of course they did. Revelation 3.9 reiterates Revelation 2.9. I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not. But do lie. I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. Whose feet? Your feet, black man, woman, and child. Abraham's descendants, Afro descendants. Now here's what Israel defense minister, Yahoo Galant, called Hamas human animals. Well, let's look at it. Now Galant claimed that his people, the Jewish people, are descendants of Jacob in the Bible. Jacob is the twin brother of Esau by way of Isaac, Abraham's second son, according to the Bible. So that makes you Jews cousins to the Palestinians. Then you are calling your cousins animals, and Abraham and your God, since by your account you say that you are Abraham's seed. Now all of you black notable politicians and those out there that spoke against the Hamas, such as Al Sharpton, NAACP, Black Caucus, ADOS, Hakeem Jeffries, and others who said that the violent and unprovoked attacks were despicable, you that call these people animals, you call them, you call us the same thing. When we rebelled against your human inhumane treatment of us, you call us animals, savages, rioters, rebel rousers, and more. Now I have a question for the Reverend Al Sharpton. Do you believe that a white Moses went into a black Africa, Egypt, to liberate white people, Jews, from Pharaoh 4,000 years ago? If you believe that Al Sharpton, you believe in white supremacy. Listen to what Rabbi David Warpy said, senior rabbi at Los Angeles Temple. The exodus did not happen the way the Bible depicts it, if it happened at all. He also said that nearly 100 years of excavation have yielded no conclusive evidence that the Israelites were ever slaves, lived in Egypt, or wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Nor is there proof that they conquered Canaan with Joshua as their leader. Archaeology and biblical history have demonstrated that the Bible is not intended to be taken as literal history. Rabbi Warpy said, it is a spiritual history, and that is the way modern Jews ought to relate to the biblical text. Now, these all of you hear that, what this rabbi said, especially black preachers. But the way the Palestinians are also, by the way, the Palestinians are also the second, the seed of Abraham by Isaac, Master Farah Muhammad, Allah God, according to the Bible. I'm quoting the Honorable Silas Muhammad now. April 10th, 1983 should mark a turning point in the history of man and earth. There are so many untruths told today until the most it's most difficult for any of my people to distinguish between which is false and which is which is true. 
The Bible is so mixed up with falsehood, the Quran also. Falsehood has been added to it. Abraham was the last messenger between the two worlds, the world of good, the world of bad, the world of right, the world of wrong, good and evil. We wanted to establish peace in the earth, so we wrote prehistory, prophecy, foretelling our events to come, to take place. We projected that Abraham would be the last messenger in, the, in that world, both good and evil. If you pay close attention to the teaching of the old world, you will find that they generally follow the path of Isaac through Jacob, and afterwards they arrived to come to Jesus of 2,000 years ago. They did not follow the path of Ishmael to see which direction his seed took, unquote. Now, I'm finishing up here now. The Jews deceived the world, impersonating that they are the children of the prophecy. We are the prophesied slave children. The two governments, the Jewish nation and the American government, owe us Afro descendants reparation. The government, the American government, for 400 years of institutionalized slavery, and the Jewish nation for their pretense in claiming our identity and with that identity receiving wealth from the world. Here you may successively add two more governments that owe us reparation, Great Britain and France. Great Britain and France for the part which they took in the Balfour Declaration owe us reparation. It is Great Britain and France who are the two culprits who caused King Hussein to withdraw his hand from signing the negotiated settlement after learning that Palestine would become the claimed homeland for the Jewish nation, white people. Finishing up here now. I want to give you the definition of Afro-descendants. The term Afro-descendant refers to the descendants of people who were forcibly dispossessed of their homeland, Africa, were transported to the Americas in slavery diaspora for the purpose of enslavement, were subjected to forced mixed breeding and rape, have experienced through force the loss of mother tongue, culture, and religion, and or have experienced a racial discrimination due to lost ties or partially lost ties from their original identity. Now, I always like to put a spin on that when I give that definition. Uh, some of you out there remember the court case of O.J. Simpson. When he was in court and he was trying it, and Johnny Cochran said, and he tried the glove on, the black glove, Johnny Cochran said, if it don't fit, you must acquit. So my spin on this is, if this definition to black people if this definition fits, then it is legit. My name is Minister Shakur. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you all. Uh, thank you so much, Brother Minister, for that. That's a lot of information for them to try to digest concerning Christmas and also what's happening in Palestine. And I refer back to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad <clears throat> and what he said concerning who we are, as you said, Brother Minister. The black man, woman, and child, you are, as we always say, and you always hear me say it, and Brother Minister say it, come, came from Master Farad Muhammad, taught to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and now being taught by the Honorable Silas Muhammad. You are that Jesus, black man, woman, and child. There is no Jesus coming back. I understand you're all in Christianity, and you've been taught that. Mary, Jesus, and Joseph all represent a sign that was to come. We will get into more into that. Holy Quran 23 and 50 speaks of the son of Mary and his mother. We made a sign That's right. for the future. That, that will be discussed more into January. Yes, sir. But let's get into now today's Ramadan, this month, December. It was Nimrod, as the Amal Elijah Muhammad taught us, who was born on December the 25th. And it was the Caucasian race, and especially the Pope of Rome. And there was a particular Pope of Rome that inserted Jesus into Christianity and his birth on December the 25th. Who was that Pope of Rome now? That's the question. That decided upon himself now. See, I want my brothers and sisters to understand. White folks 
decided this. White men decided that. They sit around at the table and discuss it. Just as you have a round table or anything else. They decided to insert Jesus into their filthy way of life. Yes, they did. That's all it is. Who was the Pope of Rome now who decided to insert Prophet Esau, who you know is Jesus, into their Christianity, their holiday? It was Pope Julius I. Go look him up. Pope Julius I was the Pope of Rome that decided to insert Jesus' name into Christianity and was born on December the 25th. As we've been taught by the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad today, through the Honorable Silas Muhammad, continue on with that message and with that Ramadan. Nimrod was the one that was born that, and during that time. They wanted to cover it up because of their filthy habits and way of life. And they knew they could not deceive the black nations if they did not put a holy prophet of Allah's name on their filthy way of life. And let me say this to you so you all understand. It was Nimrod. Nimrod and his mother, Saturnalia, Ishtar, as they want to call her. Nimrod had a sexual, sexual relationship and married his mother. Is that not right, Brother Master? That's right. Nimrod now. See, this is what the Pope of Rome, this is what the black preachers, now, it's not going to teach you. That's why we say to you, Tell your children now, if you were not there and work all year, stop giving all your praises to a fat cracker. That's right. You out here paying taxes. Some of you now done got broke before January even coming in. <laughs> because you're trying to give your children now some toys. Because if you don't do it, they're going to look at you and ask you why. Well, tell them the truth. That's all you have to do. Be man and woman enough. Well, let me say this to you. Why don't you start being Jesus for a change? Since you're always crying about Jesus, then why not be Jesus? Black man, woman, and child. Be that as you say you read and the man you say you follow. That's right. Jesus did not tell no lies to the children. He spoke that truth. Spoke the truth. So I'm asking you now, black man, woman, and child. You feel as though that you're not holy enough, righteous enough to speak that truth. So you want to leave it up to a man that they sacrificed and killed 2,000 years ago. Now, that's on you. You are the Jesus. I say it again. Brother Minister said it. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said it. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said it and wrote it in his books. Came from Master Farad Muhammad. You, black man, woman, and child. That's right. I am Jesus. You are that Jesus. You are that baby Jesus. You are the saviors of the world. You are now. That's right. White folks is crying for you. The Palestinians over there is crying, say, Oh, Allah, help us. The black man is Allah. You, the black woman, is God. You say you got us. Start acting like God is then. Acting. That's all it is. That's all you have to do. Teach your children the truth. You know darn well. Ain't no 400 pound white man with a cast iron slave is going to slide on top of your house. <laughs> you know that now. Going all over the world. That's right. Night. Well, wait a minute, Minister. Uh, he ain't got but 10 hours to get to Palestine. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, you, you, we talking about mathematics, right? Yeah. So he ain't got but ten hours to get to Palestine and drop out some toys. Then he got to get ten hours back. That's twenty hours. Yeah. And when he out in the daylight, then ain't going all over the world. Then he can't man. come back to America and give out toys. He done ran out of time. That's right. This is the white man lies now. That's 
right. Wake up. That's wake what I'm up. saying to you. That's his lines. We talking about mathematics. We just dealing with basic mathematics here. That's right. Taking him 20 to 12 hours to get over there to Palestine. Oh, I, okay, that's Rudolph. So Rudolph to get there in, in, in a zap <laughs> and, and, and come back within an hour. Mm. That's the white folks teaching. What that's the lies of Christianity. The false teachings of Christianity, brothers and sisters. So I've been your host, Brother Shabazz, along with my co-host, Minister Shakur, and we certainly hope you got something out of the program this morning. Why the Honorable Elias Muhammad chose December for us as the month of Ramadan. Ramadan. And we'll see you all next month on the third Sunday. Peace, love, and soul. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>